Hello everyone, my name is Haster Hayes, and welcome back to the disturbing true stories of the web. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more interesting and disturbing topics. Thanks guys. Tatiana Tarzov is a prime example of why there should be proper stalking laws in place to protect someone if that stalker choose to do something wrong. In 1968, Tatiana became friends with a university student in Berkeley, California, and things got interesting. They shared a friendly kiss during a New Year's party, and uh, Prigette, the known stalker, got the wrong feeling about it, and he felt that she was attracted to him. But Tatiana came to him and said, Hey, um, I understand how you're feeling, but I am not interested in you in the same way. Uh, we can just be friends. But Project could not handle the rejection that came from Tatiana, and he became obsessed with her. He would even go as far as to secretly record any and all conversations with her. In the summer of 1969, Tatiana went to a fun little trip, a vacation trip, to Brazil. So Project, while he was still in California, decided to go see a special psychologist to help him with his issues with Tatiana. During one therapy session with this doctor, he openly expressed the intentions to kill Tatiana when she returned. The doctor believed that he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. So the doctor, being a like-minded individual, decided to notify the campus police. So the campus police took Prigette into custody. And while the police were speaking with him, they determined that he was not harmful and not dangerous to Tatiana at all in so much that they actually let him go. When Tatiana came back from her fun little vacation in Brazil, she was never informed by the campus nor the police that Prigette was out to get her, nor the threats that he made. And because of this lack of performance, Tatiana was sadly killed. Prigette showed up to her house and shot her with a pellet gun before stabbing her 14 times, killing her. But the strange thing is, is that Prigette actually came forward to the police almost immediately and turned himself in. And of course, in this case, he was obviously charged with these actions and was convicted. He ended up being convicted with second degree murder. But the strange thing about his conviction was that he was overturned while in the court. The jury did not fully understand who the person they were dealing with was. So, the state elected to retry him for his actions, and the retrial went like this. The state ended up electing to retrial him, and during the retrial, they convicted him for second-degree murder, and he was placed in jail for five years. After which, of course, he would be sent away and be sent back to India. During the retrial case, Prajet was charged with second-degree murder, and they elected to have him serve five years in prison, after which case he was taken and deported back to his original country of India. After some time, Tatiana's family elected to sue the hospital for not properly notifying her or her family of the situation that Tatiana was in. This ended up leading to a Supreme Court case between the two sides, and this is how it went. After the Supreme Court case was said and done, Medical and health professionals are required to notify any bystanders of any patients that may have made threats to them. In April of 1984, there was a 35-year-old man named Richard who worked at ESL Labs Incorporated. While working at ESL Labs, he was also a defense contractor in Sunnyville, California. But when a 22-year-old named Laura Black moved into ESL as a job opportunity, Richard immediately became obsessed with her. Richard would consistently ask Laura out all the time, and he would leave her gifts and presents of all sorts. And every time, Richard was turned down. Over the next four years, Richard's obsession increased and became extremely disturbing. Richard would often show up at Laura's house unexpectedly and he even wrote her 200 different letters and she had to move seven different times. After all this time, Laura finally went to Human Resources to complain about Richard and what he was doing. ESL decided to separate them and forced him to stay away from Laura 
And all this time, they also allowed him to attend counseling sessions for his obsession with Laura. However, after all this time has progressed, Richard's obsession increased dramatically, and he would constantly prowl and stalk her, and he was let go of ESU. In spite of all this, Richard's harassment never stopped, and it didn't come to an end, sadly. Laura ended up setting up a temporary restraining order in an attempt to stop him, and a court hearing was set in place. However, the day before the hearing, Richard drove his motorhome to the parking lot of ESL. In his motorhome, he had over a thousand rounds of ammunition and over seven different firearms that he was going to bring into ESL. As soon as Richard entered into the parking lot, he shot his first victim, killing him. Richard proceeded inside the ESL building, where he killed seven more people as he was moving towards Laura's office. When he had finally arrived into her office, he shot her twice and left her there. Meanwhile, he ended up engaging with the police for over five hours in a standoff before he finally surrendered. The one good thing that happened is that Laura actually survived, but sadly, all seven of those employees he shot, he killed. Meanwhile, many more were injured. Richard was charged with first degree murder and he now sits in San Quentin awaiting death row. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more troubling and disturbing stories. Thanks guys.